This is El Chino Antrax, or Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa. He was once the Sinaloa cartel's highest ranking assassin and a ruthless drug lord who was extremely tough, even for his fellow Sicarios. Some people join the cartel from impoverished backgrounds with few job opportunities. They're not necessarily evil, they're just desperate for some quick cash. But what about those cartel members who climb the ranks and get to the top, killing and maiming on the way? Well, that's another type of cartel member. Some people have such a lust for power and money, they will literally stop at nothing. And the Sinaloa cartel is a place that encourages ruthless people to do their worst. So let's explore why El Chino was hired by the Sinaloa cartel and how he became their most feared killer and how he met his strange demise in 2020. Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa was born in Coyoacán, Mexico on June 15, 1980. And unlike many of his cartel peers, Jose did not grow up poor. In fact, he was a son of a rich and educated family. So why did he join the cartel? In Jose's case, there was a geographical reason. You see, his childhood neighbor was none other than Ismael Zambada, AKA El Mayo. El Mayo famously led the Sinaloa cartel from the shadows with El Chapo as the front man. After El Chapo's arrest, El Mayo officially took control of the cartel. But to this day, his whereabouts are unknown and there's a $15 million reward on his head. So Jose grew up playing with El Mayo's many sons. They all grew up into young men and they started their own families. But when Jose was married with kids, he began to struggle financially. So who other to ask for help than El Mayo's sons? Vicente Zambada, El Mayo's oldest, immediately offered Jose a job as a bodyguard for the Sinaloa cartel. Jose started small with minute errands for the cartel, but I don't imagine he was doing the groceries. As a cartel bodyguard, small errands include beating people up and threatening them into submission. So Jose got engulfed in a world of violence and he started to like it. Up until 2008, he worked for the Sinaloa cartel leaders, beating, then even killing their enemies. But 2008 was a fateful year as there was a big rift in the cartel. Beltran Levia cartel separated from the Sinaloa. By now, Jose had a nasty thirst for blood and he wanted more power than his simple bodyguard job offered him. So he seized the opportunity and created his own armed squadron, Los Anthrax. Now he was El Chino Anthrax, which means the Chinese anthrax. No one really foresaw that El Chino Anthrax was harboring his mind. You wouldn't really think a young family man from a well-off family would want to dismember people and leave their bodies strung up on bridges. But sadly, that's all true. Under El Chino's command, Los Anthrax were pure evil. They not only targeted the Sinaloa cartel's enemies, they killed civilians and police officers, anyone who interfered with their violent activities, and anyone who looked at them the wrong way. El Chino Anthrax wasn't alone. His most trusted man was Rene Velasquez Venezuela. He was just as nasty and bloodthirsty and was happy to take any life as long as he could proclaim his power. So by 2010, the police were out to get them and so were rival cartels. The first to go was El Pocho Anthrax, another violent squad leader. He died in a huge shootout with the Beltran Levia cartel in June 2010. The following year, three more Anthrax members were arrested by the police, but they weren't jailed. They were tortured on information on the rest of the group, then killed. By the end of the year, El Chino Anthrax lost one of his right-hand men, Francisco Arce Rubio, or Pancho Arce. He was playing an indoor soccer game when a rival cartel army barged in on the team and gunned down several Sinaloa and Anthrax men. Pancho Arce died at the scene. This is when El Chino Anthrax became scared. You would think a man as ruthless and violent as El Chino Anthrax wouldn't bow down to rival cartel attacks. Cartel drug lords and squad leaders usually retaliate until every party is particularly disseminated. But in late 2011, El Chino realized he was vulnerable and asked for El Mayo's help. He figured that if El Mayo negotiated directly with the rival cartels, then Los Anthrax would receive an extra layer of protection. But even though El Mayo spoke with the rival kingpins, the negotiations didn't work. Los Anthrax were incredibly violent, and the only way they could be stopped was with more violence. In February 2012, Anthrax soldier Roque Landeros 
and three other men were killed. The situation was even more worrying here. They hadn't been killed by rival cartels or the police. They were the victims of an international struggle within the Sinaloa cartel. El Chapo's army group was going after Los Antrax. By now, they wanted El Chino Antrax arrested too. In 2012, he was charged with conspiring to import 500 grams of methamphetamines and five kilos of white powder to the US. The DEA had listened to phone conversations between El Chino and his many traffickers over a period of six months. And after arresting several small fish from the Sinaloa cartel, they had enough testimonies to indict El Chino Anthrax. He was concerned. The Mexican authorities, the DEA, rival cartels, and even El Chapo were fighting to have Los Anthrax dissolved. Admits all this, these are the photos of El Chino Anthrax with posts of himself on social media. He seemed to be completely oblivious to the fact that he was a wanted man. He even went to VIP parties in the US. This is a picture of El Chino next to Paris Hilton. He also posted pictures of himself with El Mayo's son. And if that wasn't cringy enough, here's a picture he took of his money and weapons. Then the most conspicuous photo he posted was of his skull ring. This was the symbol of Los Antrax. Now the DEA had a clear connection between him and Los Antrax. El Chino had escaped Mexican authorities for years, even with all his social media posts, because he would usually blur his face. Then El Chino even had plastic surgery and tried to alter his fingerprints, even though he wasn't showing it online. He was afraid, and he was desperate to elude the police. But when the DEA got a hold of his social media profiles, there was no escaping them. On New Year's Eve 2013, El Chino Antrax flew from Mexico to the Netherlands and landed at Amsterdam Airport. The DEA knew he boarded that flight, and they alerted the Dutch authorities. They were thus on the lookout for a Mexican national wearing a glam skull ring. That day, he was arrested inside the airport. Three days later, an FBI agent and Mexican newspapers leaked the information. El Chino Antrax was in custody. He was traveling as Norberto Siqueiros Garcia and was identified via his skull ring. He had taken the identity of a dead Mexican citizen and had even changed his appearance, but he couldn't let go of his pride. If it weren't for his anthrax ring, he might have never gotten caught. El Chino was initially taken to Vught Maximum Security Prison in the Netherlands, but the United States wanted him extradited for the plethora of drug trafficking charges. On January 8, the U.S. Department of Treasury sanctioned El Chino under the Four Narcotics Kingpin Designated Act. Yep there is such a thing. This basically meant that all his US assets were frozen and he could no longer make deals from jail. Through this act, a big plot twist was revealed. El Chino Anthrax was El Mayo's army man, but he was also El Chapo's trafficking drug lord. He was working for both Sinaloa bosses. Could he be the reason for the rift between El Chapo and El Mayo? Why was El Chapo attacking Los Anthrax before his arrest? On July 10th, 2014, El Chino Antrax was extradited to the US. The next day, during his hearing in San Diego, he pleaded not guilty to all of the charges against him. Throughout the following six months, El Chino's defense team continued to delay his trial and bring new evidence so as to confuse the prosecution. His court appearances were delayed every month till a milestone in March 2015. On March 20th, El Chino pleaded guilty to conspiracy to import white powder and marijuana. There's more. He even cooperated with the U.S. government, helping them bring down several Sinaloa cartel members. Did he accept the deal that would grant him a shorter sentence? Or was he feeling genuine regret about his years with the Sinaloa? Well, both might be accurate. After receiving his sentence, he told the judge. He promised the judge he would seek work in construction and home remodeling after his release. But it's also pretty clear that his cooperation with the feds earned him a good deal. El Chino was only sentenced to seven years in prison, and since he'd already served about a year before he pleaded guilty, El Chino was released in March 2020. He was supposed to serve five more years under probation. However, this was the beginning of the end for El Chino Antrax. Now, he was going by a different name. His face was heavily altered, and he steered clear of anyone in Mexico. He knew all too well that if he would make contact with any of his former cartel friends, he would be killed. The Sinaloa cartel is not too forgiving with rats. On May 6th, two months after his release, Jose was declared missing. His probation officer visited his home for their usual check-in when he noticed he had vanished from his home. He'd also left behind his cell phone, 
who'd leave their phone behind in a normal state of mind these days. Something was off. As soon as the prosecutor phoned the authorities, Judge Dana Sabra, who had sentenced Jose in 2015, issued a warrant for his arrest. There was a chance he'd fled the US. But three days later, authorities discovered a much more grim scene. Jose's bloated body was lying next to his sister, Ada, and her husband, Juan Garcia, all of them dead from gunshot wounds inside her BMW. The car had been abandoned on a dirt road in Culiacan, their hometown. The car was identified as Ada's, but authorities weren't sure if El Chino was actually dead. Sometimes narcos fake their own deaths. And since the body was already severely decomposed and El Chino had undergone plastic surgery, it wasn't easy to tell if it was really him. So the police contacted the rest of Jose's family and asked them to do the horrible task of identifying their loved ones' bodies. Did El Chino and Thrax flee to Mexico, only to be killed by the cartel when they realized he was there? Or was he kidnapped from San Diego? Jose met his demise at the hands of the Sinaloa cartel. He was raised, hired, then killed by them. His whole life was defined by the Sinaloa cartel, and he met his end that was just as violent as his behavior with the Los Antrax. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. You never want to miss a new episode. See you next time.